Have you noticed that the Jehovah Witness organization, when it comes to scriptures that they use, right? They use certain scriptures, but they tend to cherry pick the scriptures, right? But they use certain scriptures to justify their means um, when it comes to the fellowshipping, when it comes to uh, people dying from blood, right? But um, they cherry pick certain scriptures that they want to use to um, to make their claims, right? For instance, when it comes to the fellowshipping, they may say, oh, they may use that scripture, oh, thou shouldn't associate with wicked people, no fornicators, no adulterers, so forth and so forth, right? They will use that scripture to try to, to, to um, to justify someone being shunned in the fellowship, right? They will use that scripture. But um, what about scriptures like loving thy neighbor, which is supposed to be the second commandment? What about loving thy enemy? When's the last time you heard them have a talk about... Uh, the, when's the last time you heard them talking about loving, having love for an apostate, for a whistleblower? For an opposer, right? You're either with them or against them. And if you're against them, there is no love. So, like I said, that scripture, that, that verse, uh, loving thy enemy, how come they don't talk about that? Matthew twenty two thirty nine 39 says, to love thy neighbor as yourself. That is, that is the second commandment, right? Mind you, that's the second commandment. Love thy neighbor as as yourself. Now, does this say to love only other Jehovah's Witnesses as thyself? No. It says love thy neighbor, which is everyone, right? Now, check this out. The Bible will say that, right? But the governing body leaders, the leaders of the Jehovah's Witness organization, they would tell their members, oh, if they're not, if they're a non-believer, don't associate with them. If they're wicked people, leave them alone. Where do you see that in the Bible? Where do you see that in the Bible? Just because someone is not a part of your religion, you can't associate with them? You can't even marry outside the Jehovah's Witness religion. Where do you see that in the Bible? The Bible is all about, oh sorry, Jesus is all about peace and love, right? So in the Bible, uh, there's plenty of scriptures where uh, Jesus, he accepted everyone, right? Jesus, he, he didn't just heal um, people who followed him, he healed anyone that needed healing, right? He accepted everyone. He loved everyone unconditionally. Jesus, ate, he ate with tax collectors. He ate with prostitutes, right? He rubbed the, the feet of prostitutes. He did not discriminate at all, right? He, he welcomed and accepted and loved everyone that he met, right? Now, how is it that Jehovah Witnesses, when it comes down to it, right? They don't choose to mimic Jesus, they choose to listen to these men. They choose to listen. They choose to listen to their nine imperfect leaders, right? Because their leaders tend to cherry pick certain scriptures, right? Just to just to suit their narrative. And they'll say, "Oh, if anyone, like, like I said before, anyone who the leaders will say, anyone who's not in the religion is a wicked person. Stay away from them. It's part of they're part of Satan's world, right?" What scripture supports that? Because the last time I checked, I met a whole bunch of good-hearted people outside the Jehovah's Witness organization, and they had way, way better, way better morals and way better hearts than some of these Jehovah's Witnesses. So, Jehovah's Witnesses, remember, Jesus was all about unity. He was all about love, right? I'm talking about agape, unconditional love. As something that you will not find in the Jehovah's Witness religion because they think it's okay to just have love for their own kind. Like I said, which scripture supports that? Which scripture supports that? If Matthew twenty two thirty nine says to love thy neighbor as yourself, then why are you only showing love towards fellow other fellow Jehovah's Witnesses when there's a whole world out people there's a whole world out there of people that need to be loved? Not just Jehovah's Witnesses, but everybody. You're supposed to be mimicking Jesus, not your, not your leaders, not your man, your imperfect human leaders, right? <clears throat>
Jehovah's Witnesses. We're in a Bible. Now we're talking about cherry picking scriptures, right? Like I said, your leaders, they would cherry pick certain scriptures to suit their needs, right? They don't talk about love. They don't talk about uh, Matthew twenty two thirty nine, showing love to thy neighbor. They don't talk about that because they know damn well that they don't apply that. They don't talk about loving thy, thy enemy, right? And like I said in my other videos, they try to demonize apostates and whistleblowers. Anybody who opposes the organization, they try to... Uh, like I said, they try to oppose them, right? They try to um, demonize them, right? And where does that scripture, love thy enemy, how, where does that come in effect? Now, a Jehovah's Witness would see me as an enemy, as an opposer, because I'm speaking against the religion, right? But you're still supposed to be showing me love. According to the Bible, if you believe in the Bible, you're still supposed to be showing me love. If you think I'm your enemy, where's the love? See, you guys cherry pick. You choose which scriptures you want to abide to, right? Now, you witnesses will go on preaching about a proud I serve, right? Can you find the words proud I serve in the Bible? Just out of curiosity. You will never find the two words paradise earth in the Bible. You won't even find a passage where Jesus spoke about people living forever on a paradise earth. Now, the scriptures that witnesses use, right? Now, the word paradise is found in the Bible four times, right? And all four times, if you look at the entire context of the scripture, you will see that they're speaking about a heavenly paradise, not a physical paradise on earth. They're talking about a heavenly spiritual paradise, right? So, some some witnesses would use the scripture uh, Luke 23, 43, right? Luke 23, 43, which clearly, <laughs> it talks about Jesus when he was on the torture stake, right before he was about to pass, right? He looked to the man next to him that was also about to pass away too. And Jesus said to him, you will be with me in paradise. This is Luke 23, 43, right? He said, you will be with me in paradise. Now, according to Jehovah Witness theology, Witnesses, they don't think that Jesus is going to, he's going to be in paradise physically, right? He's not going to be riding an elephant and eating a watermelon with the rest of the human, with, with everybody else on paradise earth, right? According to witness theology, he is not going to return physically, right? So when Jesus said to that man, you will be with me in paradise, he obviously meant spiritually. He meant in heaven. He meant in heaven. So once again, you cannot find the two words, paradise, earth, and a Bible. Just like you won't find a passage about Jesus speaking about a paradise, earth. He never said people was going to live forever on paradise, earth. There's no scripture that supports that. And if the paradise, if that was something that was going to happen, right? If that was bound to happen, don't you think that would have been written all over the Bible? Right? You would see the word paradise, earth, the earthly paradise. Jesus would have preached about it. It would be all... All throughout the Bible, right? And various different scriptures. If that's the end game, right? The end game for witnesses is, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna live forever in paradise earth, right? If you truly believe that with all your heart, find me the words paradise earth in the Bible. Find me the words paradise earth. Find a scripture, because you know damn well Jesus would have spoke about that. There's no patches that so there is no passage in the Bible that supports that. That is something that your leaders have made up, the governing body leaders. You you guys know that scripture. I don't know I don't know it by heart, but um the scripture that says that no one knows the day or the hour, right? No one knows the day or the hour. How is it? Not even Jesus, by the way, says no one. So how is it that Stephen Lett, one of the leaders of the Jehovah's Witness organization, how can he honestly say we're in the last part of the last part of the last part of the final parts of the last part of the final parts of the days, the last days? How can he honestly say that if Jesus Christ doesn't even know when the end is near? 
or is supposed to be near, right? Why would God tell Stephen Lett that it's extremely close when the final part of the final part of the final part of the days? Why would God tell him and forget about Jesus and not even tell Jesus when the Bible clearly says that no one knows the last, when the last day, you know, when the end is going to come, no one knows. But maybe Stephanie and God are sending each other text messages. Who knows? I don't know. But how can he honestly say that if the Bible says that no one knows? This organization is famous. They are famous for picking and choosing certain scriptures to suit their narrative, right? And it works. Sad to say it works because there's still, what, over 7 million Jehovah's Witnesses, right? So, Jehovah's Witnesses, like I said, find me the words Paradise Earth. If you believe this with all your heart, right? Because I already know Paradise is not coming. I did my research. I know that this is just a man-made organization disguised as a religion, right? It's a publishing company disguised as a religion, right? So, if you honestly believe that Paradise Earth is coming, do your research. Open the Bible. Look for the words Paradise Earth or Earthly Paradise. Look for those two words together. I promise you, you will not find it. And I promise you, you will not find a passage where Jesus spoke about this, where he spoke about the Paradise Earth. That's not recorded in the Bible at all. You know why? Because it's not happening. That's why. And if it's not in a Bible, then it's not valid. It's not valid. Um, I'm going to leave this video on that note. But Jehovah's Witnesses, when you look at certain scriptures, when your leaders are trying to make a point, right? Look at the entire context of the scripture. Because like I said, they will cherry pick certain scriptures to, to suit their needs, right? For instance, that scripture that talks about um, uh, not not taking blood, right? Not taking blood to save your life. You're supposed to die. You're supposed to be a martyr. God rather be for you to be a martyr than for you to live and be with your family and friends. Does that make sense to you? Now, the scripture that they use, I don't know from the top of my head, but that scripture clearly says, if you look at the entire context of the scripture, it clearly says that you shouldn't consume, you shouldn't, you shouldn't eat eat blood, right? shouldn't consume it digest down your throat to your stomach right it don't say nothing about taking blood to save your life that's two different things now if you're trying to be a vampire and go on a blood feast then that's different yeah the bible says it not to consume blood right but like i said it says nothing about taking medical uh, uh blood to take to save your life during medical procedures right if you need a blood transfusion you honestly think god why would he want you to suffer and die why would he want you to be six feet under, perish away, right? Just so, just so that your family and friends can miss you. And for you to be lifeless when you have the option to take life-saving blood. That makes no sense. That makes no sense. God would never ask for anyone to die or want anybody to die instead of taking blood that could save their life. But see, that's the scripture that they use. They use a scripture that says, thou shouldn't eat blood or consume blood, Right? They took that entire scripture out of context to suit their narrative, to suit, you know, to, to make it seem legit. But when you look at these scriptures in their entire context, you will see that that scripture has nothing to do with what they're trying to say. Nothing to do with, with nothing at all to do with what they're trying to say, right? They cherry pick scriptures, Jehovah's Witnesses. Look at the entire context of the scripture. Look at the bigger picture. Remember, Jesus loved everyone. He accepted everyone. Nowhere in the Bible do you see where you're supposed to be separated from everybody else, right? Nowhere in the Bible do you see that. Jesus, Jesus was all about love. He was all about unity, right? That's exactly how, how it should be. You don't see nowhere in the Bible, oh, we shouldn't, we should only associate with Jehovah's Witnesses. We should only hang out with our kind. Nowhere do you see that in the Bible, right? Like I said, if you want to play the whole, oh, well, everybody else is wicked. We, we, we're righteous in God's eyes. We're God's people. Everybody else is wicked. If you want to play that card, right? If you, if, you, if you want to go that route, then I can easily say that 
there's a whole bunch of atheists out there that have really good hearts, that love people, that aren't wicked, that have good morals. Atheists, people that don't even believe in God have better hearts than some of the Jehovah's Witnesses, right? So just because you're a Jehovah's Witness doesn't mean that you're not wicked, right? It don't mean that you're not wicked. So this whole separation thing, us versus them, that's from your leaders. Nowhere in the Bible does it talk about that. You're supposed to be mimicking Jesus. Remember, Jesus loved everybody. If he could wash the feet of prostitutes and sit down and sit down and eat with worldly, worldly tax collectors, then that should tell you something. I'll see you guys on the next video.